All right. Hello, everyone. This is uh, Lavalet from the Lavalet and Ella Live show. Uh, I'm your host, Lavalet. My co-host, uh, Ella, will not be in this afternoon. Uh, she had a, so, somewhat of an emergency. Uh, she had to flew to England. So she's going to be with her sister uh, over in England. Uh, I don't want to go into it for the first time. My life, but uh, you know, she had an emergency. I'm hosting the show tonight. Uh, as a special guest on the night show, I do have Mr. Larry Pancho Brown, uh, I, and he's not going to be available on the show. I had to tape him yesterday, so it will be, we'll be looking at a tape when I do bring him on. So I just want to let you know that, you know, uh, we did pre tape his part yesterday also. So, uh, so hello everybody out there. It's great to see you. Uh, I see ferns in the house. Glad to have you aboard. Uh, so somebody else, I see some people out there. Come on, holler at me. Give me help, help me out this afternoon. I need to be able to uh, reach out to you and talk to you for a second. You know, before I show some of my work. So I'm expected, I'm going to show you a little bit of my work and I'm going to have a poncho on. And uh, I think that's what's going to be the plan for the show this afternoon. So um, come on now, let me see some comments. I don't know who's out there, nobody preferring. And I know she's not the only one out there. I see some good impressive numbers on my screen that I know that there are more viewers uh, viewing. So give me a shout out. Let me hear from you. Come on now. I need to know who's in the house so I can, uh, you know, okay. Well, my friend, Mona Lisa, great to see you. Hello, how are you? Hope everything is fine in Chicago. I'm still looking for my goodie, my goodie package. I, <laughs> I haven't received it as of yet, but great to see you in the house. And I hope you're staying warm. All right. So, and you see, I have my scony hat on this afternoon, tonight also, so great. Um, uh, I know a lot of you guys don't know scony or never heard of scony, but scony was like one of the better hat makers around. He passed a couple of years ago, and uh, Mona Lisa is uh, scony's sister. And uh, so his his business sort of passed with him, but he was a, he is a great hat maker I have quite a few of his hats and most of the people that I know have some of his hats. So, all right. So somebody else, come on now. <laughs> I, I know I'm, I'm not worried about that. I know you said, I know you're going to send me something good. So I'm looking forward to that. So we got Orlando in the house now. See, now I, I, I know the hot girls ain't that I'm glad, uh, uh, Zeke was able to pull that bet off. All right. Rabia, great to see you. New York City. Rabia is in the house. Oh, oh man, she was a great host doing BAM. She hosted uh, myself and Manhati for uh, BAM. So, and it was a great pleasure to, to uh, stay there in Brooklyn and be able to do that show in, in Brooklyn. And I see Pamela is in the house. Uh, I do want your address. I, I meant to call you this week, but I didn't get around to it. I'm very sorry, but I have something to send to you. So if you will put your address in the comments, I'm going to send you something. All right, Pamela. It was great having you on the show last week. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on our uh, next show, which will probably be uh, Black Friday, November the 5th. I see Manhati's in the house. Great to have you on board. I'm glad you found some time. I know you've been busy working on your suit. All right. Okie dokie. All right. <laughs> At Weena in Nashville. Hello, how are you? Glad to have you. And glad to have you in the house too, Brother Abu. Thank you for... Uh, being Philly in the house this afternoon, since Ella's not on the show. So we have Philly being represented. We got New Orleans, we got California, we got uh, Orlando, uh, we got Chicago, you know. So come on now, if you're out there, let me know. 
uh, you out there. And happy birthday to anybody that's got a birthday coming up this month. Uh, all right. So I look forward to, uh, yeah, that's it. So read the bottom line. It says Black Friday will be starting on November the 25th. So look forward to that show. We plan on having a great show for you. All right. So, and which queen is that that we're saying hello to? I don't see my Robin in the house. Where is my Robin? I mean, I don't have no Texans in the house yet. So come on, Texas, where you at? Um, Texas is really usually represented it pretty well. So I, I don't have somebody from Dallas. I got somebody from uh, Midland. All right. So, and tonight I will be showing a couple of my pieces uh, before I introduce uh, Pancho. Uh, I'm going to um, show some of my uh, Adinkra symbol pieces and uh, one or two of the comedic pieces, which is the uh, Ankh. So uh, I'm going to be showing those pieces in a minute or two. But I want to first thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, and again, like I said, uh, my co-host Ella is not aboard tonight. She's over in England. So she will be back next week, and we will be uh, the Lavalet and Ella live next week. So, uh, you know, I might be struggling a little bit, but uh, I've been here and done this before. So, all right, Queen. Uh, at Wiener, I think, right? At, yes, Nashville. All right. And I, I see Abu. Abu is from Philly. Um and, and oh, and oh, I can't forget uh, Rabia. Rabia is in the house. Um, Manhati, did you see that? Uh, we have Rabia in the house tonight with us. So uh, I see you came in a little bit late. I hope you got to see her that she is in the house with us. I don't know what, where's my New Jersey family, my Cali family also. So you guys got to write out your little comments. I'm very sorry that. That's the process. Okay. Oh, Teresa T, baby, on another Chicagoite. So glad to have you. I'm glad to hear that you have retired. All right. It's, it, that's a very good thing. And that only gives you freedom to do what you want to do. You ain't got no time clock. Um, that, that's a strange thing. I was, uh, I'm, I'm on a new medication, and so I take the medication very late at night, and it keeps me up for a minute, so I can't go to bed, but uh, it, it's better for me to do that. Oh, and there's my friend, William. William, t William, hello, William. Glad to have you in the house tonight. Glad to see you. Haven't seen you in quite some time. Uh, miss you, so I'm glad to have you in the house, all right? Sorry, Ella isn't here this afternoon, but she will be back next week. Also, that's really nice. I'm really happy to see Williams in the house. I'm hoping he's, uh, I know he transitions from Maryland, from one place in Maryland to another place in Maryland. So, um, and he's a busy man. So we'll go with that. All right. So uh, as, as I was saying, so I take this medication late at night. And so I stay up really late at night. So, uh, but I don't have anybody. I don't have to be up at eight o'clock in the morning because I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is take my dogs out whenever it's ready for them to go outside. So I'm free. If I stay up till three or four o'clock in the morning, I'm okay. And all I need to do is just really stay in bed and rest until I'm fully regrouped again. So I hope that's the way you'll feel too, T. There's be no clock for you. So you'll have uh, lots of freedom, okay? All right. Yeah, we, we, we miss William, that's for sure. I mean, William is, uh, I don't know, he's a fantastic person and he's really contributed a lot to our show. I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's uh, really been a big, a, a big contributor to all the artists, so I appreciate him an awful lot. All right. All right. So... Nice to have you guys in the house. Nice to have Rabia in the house tonight. So I'm not gonna, I, I have Puncho coming up. And so I'm gonna go ahead on 
And unless you got something going on with me, I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to start my show. I'm going to do a couple of, couple of pieces and then I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Brother Poncho. Okay. So, like I said, uh, I was thinking about the... Um, I got the Adinkra symbols tonight, um, and I think I'm starting out with, uh, not the Adinkra symbols, but I'm starting out with the, oh, that's number 12. That's the last one there, Is it? Can we, yeah, can we go back all the way? Give me one second. Oh, there we are. That's number one. So I had this uh, leftover um, ear spear uh, that had the cowrie shells, and I was thinking about doing my jewelry tonight on cowrie shells. So I pulled this one out and uh, took a photo of it, and uh, it is going to be $35. This is an ear spear with cowries on it. It's one of the longer ear spears, and normally they sell for like $65. And so uh, giving you quite a price break on this one tonight is $35. And it's BAM number 10. All right, so this is a cowrie. This is a ear spear that has four cowries on the center. Okay, and it's BAM number 10. So if, uh, if you want, you can go to www.bamboozlejewelry.com and uh on that site you can find all of my jewelry like my ear spears uh, some of the bracelets the rings uh earrings belts all of the things that i make okay uh, will be are available on the website all right bam number 11. a bam number 11 this is the unk pendant it's 65 dollars it's a new addition to my casting this is hand cast by me. Uh, I do all these castings myself. So this is BAM number 11. And again, it is $65. It has a real nice heavy bell. It's all sterling silver. Again, sterling silver is what it's made out of. All right. All right. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Well, I don't get there Chicago in the wintertime, so I'll see you in the spring or the summer, I hope. <laughs> um, gone are the days of the uh, going to Chicago in the wintertime for Kwanzaa Fest. We used to have Kwanzaa Fest out on the lake uh, and a couple of other places, but it used to be a great show to go there in the wintertime uh, for Kwanzaa Fest. So, uh, but... That show closed down a long time ago, so I haven't been to Chicago in the wintertime in quite a while. So it'll probably be the spring of the summer before I make it back. All right. So again, this is BAM number 11, and it is a sterling silver onk. And it's about two inches long. BAM number 12. BAM number 12, this is the onk bracelet. It has five unk pieces for a size uh, nine bracelet. I think I have it on. It's a mine. Mine's a, a size nine, but whatever size you want, it can be your size, size eight and a half, eight, seven and a half. You just need to let me know. It's the unk a bracelet, and it's on sale for a hundred and fifty dollars. All right, so you had the BAM, the UNC necklace, you got the UNC bracelet. All right, our next item, BAM number 13. This is the Janame, and this is a big Janame with a nice, beautiful, big bell. And the bell also has the small Janame on it. Janame, except God, God is almighty, omnipotent one. That's all about the Janame. The Adinkra symbol stands for God is Almighty. All right, and it is $85. So you better get this one. It's a one of a kind. You know, if you want it, you better grab it. Bam number 13. All right. Now, bam number 14. 
This is the Farahu, the house symbol with the Janame in the house. So it's the house of God, basically, or protect your house with God. All right. Yeah, William, I know you wanted that one. That one should that one is yours. That one that one belongs to you. Jiname will go well with your collection of Jinames. I know you have a collection of things with the Jiname on. I think that will be a nice collection, nice piece for you. Okay, bam number 14 is also the Jiname with the house symbol intermixed. All right. Bam number 14. And bam number 15 is our symbol, which stands for unity, peace, the two crocodiles sharing the same stomach. I do have earrings with the Adinkras. Uh, Robin, all you have to do is look on the uh, website there and you'll see some, you'll see all of the Adinkra symbols I have. I have the uh, Aya symbol, I have the Janame symbol. Uh, we've got, we've got quite a few of uh, the uh, Adinkra uh, earrings. So if that, what you mean, I, I make them also as posts. Uh, if you go to the website, you can find the uh, earrings that are in the Adinkra symbols. And you can also have them in little small posts that will also act as uh, little uh, studs. All right. So now, bam, number 15. Like I said, that's the uh, two alligators, two crocodiles sharing the same stomach, a symbol of unity. Okay. Bam, number 16. And it's also, it's $65. This is the, this is the Adinkra symbol necklace. It's BAM number 16. It has the first symbol of the Adinkras. And then it has some of the other Adinkra symbols like the Inching Ching, uh, the Jiname, the uh, uh, <clears throat> Sankofa scrolls. Uh, so it has some of the other symbols on it, the comb. It, it's, uh, it measures probably 20 some inches and it's $400. It's all sterling silver. It's BAM number 16. It's a necklace, I think. Uh, let's see, yeah. I have it here, so I will hold it up. How about that? Just so that we can see that it is a necklace, right? And not um, one of my um, bracelets, which I will be showing next. So this one is $400, all right? Um, BAM number 16. And again, that's the necklace. We have Dinker symbol necklace, and it's all in sterling silver. Nice to see you, Zanetta, in the house also. Great. So BAM number 17, this is the, um, this is the charm bracelet. It's a Adinkra charm bracelet. You have your choice of charms. If I, it's not one I already make, then I can see about getting it made for you. I, I make all of these myself, so you, you can have something the way that you want it made, that's what I do, is I try and make sure that you're happy with the piece that you get from me. This piece sells for uh, $250. I'm going to sell it for $200 tonight on BAM, BAM number 17. And this is the uh, Adikra Charm bracelet. Bam number 17 again in sterling silver and it can be in any size six and a half seven eight eight and a half nine doesn't matter all right and again nice seeing you Zanetta nice seeing you T and William and Rabia I'm 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 thrilled that all of you are here uh with me tonight thank you so much for uh you know, checking in on the show. All right. I really appreciate that. 
And this is uh, one that I made for a friend of uh, Septuwa. So it, it's, it reminds me very much of, of one of the uh, slave trader bracelets. So it's like a, uh, the big circle bracelet, BAM number 18, that sells for $300. And it also has the Adinkra symbols on it. And I know William has this bracelet also. I hope he's had a chance to wear this bracelet. So it's a BAM number 18. So um, one more, I think, or is that my finish? I have one more piece. No, that's it, right, see? That was it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, so that's it for my pieces for tonight. Now I'm going to go ahead on and, um, well, great. Uh, talk to me. Don't worry about it, T. I got you. So I'm going to go ahead on and I'm going to introduce my guests for this afternoon. And uh, we can keep on. Please make your comments. I will be here with you. Uh, again, uh, my guest for this afternoon is Mr. Larry Pancho Brown. And um, Larry Pancho Brown, uh, if you don't know, uh, is uh, uh, one of the premier international artists. I mean, and uh, I, I truly mean he is definitely the artist. So I, I love his work. So, uh, and he's a good friend of mine and I've appreciated him coming on the show. Um, he recently took a tour to a tour group to Africa. This was his third tour, tour group. It's called Artists to Africa. And so this is what I have a conversation with him about is that particular tour. So for that, welcome to the show, Mr. Larry Pancho Brown. Hey, my brother, how you doing? Nice right, to have you see. here today. Uh, I'm good to see you. What's happening, man? You know, I'm doing well. You know, I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. You've been traveling. You've just been all over the continent and everything. And uh, I just you guess you just got back. So I think we're going to be talking a little bit about what you've been doing uh, while you were away. Am I correct? Yes, right. Uh, something that I do every now and then, you know, I do these, I started doing pilgrimages to Africa back in, uh, I guess it was 2013 when I did my first one. I was working with a friend by the name of Harold Cook, who resides in the DMV, District of Columbia, Maryland, Virginia area. He passed away uh, a couple of years ago. And 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 in all honesty, I lost my... Um, I think I lost my drive to tour when he passed because he was so, so masterful in what he did. I mean, uh, this guy had gone to uh, 52 countries in Africa. He only had like two more countries to go to. Uh, but he that was his favorite spot, man. He uh, was a judge in D.C. And like most of us go to the party on the weekend, he would hit a plane and he'd be in Africa somewhere. And so <laughs> I, I um, was always having conversations with artists that wanted to do uh trips to africa but you know everybody's schedule always got weird or you know people make promises that don't come through so i think in 2013 our first trip was to senegal if i'm not mistaken um yes it was to senegal and uh, we might have had about 10 or 11 people with us uh we built our trip as um uh, for artists and art, art, art collectors and art lovers. So just by that statement alone, we attract a slightly different crowd than would normally be traveling. Uh, what we try to do also is, yeah, we're going to hit some of the touristy uh, uh, spots, but we also want to take it to a few space, uh, locations where you can actually see artwork being created or uh, and meet African artists and they can meet us. So... Um, that's yeah, that yeah. when the let devil me, began to to Africa. Let me let me stop you for a minute, mm -hmm. um, because uh, so so then it's 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 basically a tour. Um, so you carry uh, there there are certain number of artists, and then they're just art lovers that all just want to just want to be on the trip. So you don't really have to be an artist to be on this particular trip. 
but you are going to expose them so everybody gets exposed to uh so i guess everybody gets exposed to the culture number one and then they get exposed to a little small community that you know they get exposed to all of the smells and sounds of africa we don't we don't uh shelter them uh we just pick a group of people that are semi like minds uh we go and we try to take in as much culture as you can with the only rule for me being leave your american at home uh huh and that means well although we went through the whole middle passage slavery aspect of our history here in this country we uh adopted a way of life living in the, in the americas so there's certain things that come commonplace with us we want things fast we, we we work hard we play hard it's there's some things that come with it but we came into a standard of how we kept our neighborhoods let's forget about um you know all the atrocities with the native americans and what happened to us but we there's still a, a way that americans govern their lives and so you know it's it's and you don't know how much of that consumes you till you go to a place where that doesn't exist uh-huh. and so it's, i love being able to put a couple of people on a on a on a on an airplane take them someplace where they think they know what they're going to see and understand everything they're going to see and then it's just the opposite it's like okay what just happened where am i <laughs> i got that and so, so i so i assume and that was something that you learned from your mentor well my mentor uh, uh he had gone to uh chanel alpha had gone to africa several times i've never traveled to africa with him uh but uh the, my travel mentee harold cook like i say he was always um doing trips to africa and so i met him uh talked to him about doing my first tour he took it under he introduced me to a to a guy went through the whole nine i partnered with uh ceramics artist um, uh, karen clark who by the way makes the perfect partner uh she loves the culture she's uh um, she has a quest for knowledge there that i've not seen many people have and so i ended up with a, a dream team um uh, a guy named awuku yurinchi is the person who oversaw my tour he also oversaw my first uh, tour to us uh, to to ghana in 2014. so it was nice to hook up with them again uh there's so many new locations in ghana now that uh, many people haven't had a chance to see yet. So it was just nice to be able to, um, I was there in January for, for five weeks to kind of map out what, what I was going to show this group when we uh, returned this time. And our group this time was substantially larger. We had 22 people in our tour. Yeah, I saw uh, I saw a brief picture of, 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 of the group. Uh, you did a, a sort of a group photo and I was amazed at that. Uh, the number of people that you had, I saw some of the, uh, I saw Joyce Will Max in that group. Yeah, well, that. you know, uh, when COVID hit, uh, a lot of things happened to artists. Uh, we weren't so much impacted by the isolation because most of us live isolated lives. But I think we all got this bug, like, I want to be somewhere else. I want to go somewhere else. I want to explore. And, uh, and then it manifested that way with quite a few people. I think that was why our numbers were so strong. Uh, we had at one point, um, uh, we had over 100 people that were interested in the trip. Mm-hmm. The time we announced it. And for the longest time, we had about 30 people that were going to be participating. And then as we got towards the end, you know, we lost a few people. But uh, 22 was a really good number. Um, wasn't It wasn't too big. But as you can imagine, 22 uh, different personalities can be a bit of a challenge. <laughs> yeah, well, we all know that. Yeah. But, uh, so, so do you get? So do they get to meet the artists that are also in our community there? That's in Ghana that you take them to uh, to interact with. Well, it's it's funny when you do a tour. It's like you you you're on a go from the time you get off the plane. The schedule's tight. 
Um, it's a real kind of a herd mentality, which I don't like. But we try to at least even it out by taking people to some places that uh, they might be interested in. We, we added a lot of stops to this tour just by request of the people that were on the tour. So uh, we're trying to be too locked in stone. Uh, but if, uh, if if one of the guests decide they wanted to do some extra shopping or something like that, we would always make a, a reference point for, to do that. If they wanted to meet a jeweler or someone to make clothing, we had uh, people that we brought on our team more or less that could meet us at the hotels and get measurements and do things. So we really did try to cater to uh, our group a little more this time than we probably have on past tours. Oh, okay, so 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 the tour was really a tour. Yeah, well, I mean, outside of we you know we 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 went to the Du Bois Center, we went to uh, Cape Coast, we went to uh, Elmina um, and the, the Elmina Castle. We did the the the, the primary uh, tourist destinations, but we also went into some places where folks, uh, like we went to the uh, the, the Ghana Cultural Center, where there's lost wax uh, area there's a drum making area there's an artist studio which i adopted that that studio back in january is a full clay studio which karen clark usually oversees when she's there uh working with those artists and so we've really made ourselves home in the ghana cultural center in kumasi because we can see um we could see a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities available in the future then in that location Oh, okay. So, so they, so you do go to Kamasi and you do hang out with other artists that are, that are African artists that are trying to, uh, to, uh, Yeah, that's an important part of this because I think in our group, we might've had 12 artists, you know, and so they want to, they want to see what's happening. Uh, they want to, uh, and then you got to remember, this is some of the, most of them was their first time. So it's sensory overload. It's sensory overload. You go expecting one thing and you come back with a whole different set of circumstances. Imagine, most of us, despite the fact that we are um, beginning to grasp our blackness and our culture, we still have a pretty blind view of what Africa is. So we are in our mind aspiring to get to this thing that most of us never actually saw or experienced before, which is kind of, it's a lot of power in that if you think about it. I mean, because we're the blackest people on the planet. Our consciousness is probably blacker than anywhere on planet Earth right now. And most of our blackness we got from this ideal. It's not based in any reality. And so I love the fact that when you take people to the source, the effect that it has on them. And even if we're able to dispel uh, the, the 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 you know the, the you know the the slave story. Mm -hmm. um, you get faced with it again uh, when you get it from another perspective. Uh, taking them to the other castle and the Cape Coast castles, and they could go inside of these areas where four hundred to a thousand slaves were kept, no lights, no running water. Um, if if you came looking for kente cloth clothing. You were going to get something else too. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, trust and believe there were some people where it was only a shopping experience. But yeah. I will tell you that most people seem genuinely touched by uh, the trip and uh, what they learned and, and some of the things they experienced. Yeah, so I know you spent a lot of time there. So, so and, and, and here we are uh, in America as Black artists. And we're always, you know, we're always trying to to bring bring black art to the forefront of our lives and everybody else's lives in some kind of manner or shape. And 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 I, so I was just wondering, you, you know, so being an African artist uh, in Africa, you don't, you, you you that's not your concern. So so you must be a little bit freer to create what it is that you might. Uh, want to feel that creative mood about? I mean, is it more? I, I it... think I think that everybody's different, Lavalle. Like when I'm there, I'm 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 in record mode. I'm in listen mode. So 
most of my experiences don't affect me till I get back home. I'm not just longing to grab a brush and paint something while I'm there. I'm more or less being a sponge at everything that I could take in when I'm on that trip. Yeah, um, yeah. I, try, I try to be present with myself. You know how you shoot everything with your cell phone now. You're standing right in front of something magical, but you still take your phone out and you shoot it with the phone, which means you're not really paying attention to the nuances of what was magical. And so I try to strip myself down and be a sponge whenever I go to the continent. Yeah, so you so you try and take in whatever you're taking in, but that, but that's what I'm saying. So 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 there's a difference though. You don't you don't have to here. You you're putting out. You know, I mean, you're 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 you're, you're creating. You're you're being creative. You're and you're trying to, like I said, you're trying to influence others by your art. You know, well, and, I mean, it's not so much I'm trying to influence anyone. I think that when you are creative, there is a. Um, is a, a line connecting the two of you, or the three of you, or the four of you, or the five of you? It's 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 a it's a very powerful energy, creative. Yeah, energy. but I mean, but, but you yourself, you're not drawing pictures of flowers. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're you're not doing still lives. You 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 do people. You do you do or you do you you do black people. You know that that's what you. I mean, that's what you do. Uh, well. Again, what we look at as art, what we've been taught about art and what art is in Africa are three different things. And so, you know, now you're walking into a place where it's utilitarian, where a whole a whole a village might be drum, a, a drum carvers, a whole village might carve sculptures, a whole village might uh, do a uh, weave kente cloth. I mean, it's just... You're faced with the other extreme of what being a creative is versus what we've been taught, which is the Eurocentric view of what art is. And I think it's, I don't think it's that heavy handed. I don't think you go into it seeing that right away. But I think what happens is you'll begin to say, oh, okay, so it's more than just I have a talent to do X. This thing is passed down. I mean, you, you know, when you see the artisans there, they carry themselves a little different than how we've been indoctrinated in art. But while while I say that, Africa is suffering from a regression in the arts. Right now, and as we speak, you know, they're, they're um, artists that are having uh, this dilemma of whether they should be an artist. There's um, a, 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 a religious um advent of christianity and colonization and all the other stuff that now people are are, are pro jesus christ very pro jesus christ in certain parts of africa and so you got people who also are afraid of their own artifacts and art because they think it represents voodoo mm-hmm. and then they, they got that because of the colonization and the, and the way that religion has been brought into these cultures. So you see a lot of things that look very, very familiar to what we're dealing with here at home, but it's just, it's manifesting in a totally different way. And so uh, it's a magical time right now, especially in Ghana, with it being an English speaking uh, nation for the most part, they are probably more welcoming to uh, African-Americans at this current time than some other countries. You know, uh, they understand now that there is a link between us and them. And um, and and I think that they're just as curious about closing the gap as we are about closing the gap. And so you find more and more people who are transplanting to Ghana, to Ghana and other countries in Africa because of this. There is a cultural exodus happening with some of us now that have been uh-huh. around for a while. They're seeing how the country is manifesting in the all of the hate is still um, happening, the divisiveness is happening, and we just want to feel safe somewhere. And so a whole lot of people's passports are being warmed up just because of that that empty feeling. Yeah, yeah, that's that that's very true. I I I, uh, I never ever thought about that before, but that's like yeah, like that's truly an alternative. It's like if you really, you know, if you feel repressed here you can really go back home <laughs> literally you can go back home 
Uh, but it's an adjustment. It's adjustment. It's like when you're raised in America with the aesthetics that we have, I understand why so many people dislike Americans. Because we're so... Um, wow, we could be so dogmatic and um, arrogant. Um, but what I love about Ghana and other parts of Africa is that if you humble yourself, you become a sponge to everything that's happening. Uh, when you hear them actually tell the story of slavery from their perspective versus what we've been taught, when you see how it manifests with that country and our country, we have more things in common than we don't have in common, you know? And so I think that understanding is, is forging another cultural connection that I think many people are trying to capture at this point in their life. Uh -huh. You know, I, 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 um, I know at least five people who now have transplanted, I mean, completely uprooted and left to live in Africa. You know, now I'm not saying I'm that bold yet, <laughs> but I can see having a space to work and a, 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 and a place to stay when I go there. Yeah, and, you and, know, and, I, was, and I was there in January, man. And the dollar exchange, uh, despite all of the problems you know our country's having and the euro is having, um, it's it's one dollar. Um, it's, it's it, it, it was uh, six CDs per one U.S. dollar when I was there in January, and by the time I left uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was ten dollars to one. And now I understand since I've been home, it's rose to $15 for one. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck right now <laughs> in Africa. And yeah. many, people, many people on our tour, uh, they got it in. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I, I, I remember trips that I've had to uh, Jamaica when Jamaica was like, 20 something to one. I mean, you know, so you have time for your dollar. Yeah. You know, or, uh, you know, you be in a country that's cash country. It's not a credit country. So the rules are different, you know. Um, but again, I think that uh, it, it really started from a conversation um, about what it would be like to take a group of artists to Africa. And it's since manifested to us doing three trips and looking at the prospect of doing others yeah i'd imagine that, that you'd be uh, planning number four <laughs> after <laughs> yeah well we had a, a, a great response so we'll probably will do number four i mean a lot of that's based on uh how busy my schedule is uh my health circumstances i got to kind of watch a bunch, a bunch of different things when i take on projects nowadays i'm, I'm also in a, a point in my career where I want to de uh, devote more time to forming these connections. Um, is I love watching people um, get a new experience. Uh, yeah, I guess you can see that twinkle in their eye, or you can see oh, yeah. their eyes. Like, well, you I mean, you, you'll, you'll see it somewhere. I mean, I mean, because it's just you got the comparisons of home. And we have our, our own idea about what poverty looks like and is. And sometimes you think you're looking at poverty and you might be looking at something completely different. <laughs> you know, it's like it's an interesting dichotomy to see folks who are of means land, get off a plane, get forced into this, this, this culture and then try to make sense out of it. And it's yeah, it can be a, a a very emotional jarring. Uh, and and so Karen Clark has also been a part of of your uh, travels to uh, to Ghana each year. Yeah, also. she's she's my left hand when it comes to the artist of Africa tour. She was actually her first trip with me. Uh, she was faced with the. Um, prospect of having to quit her job to travel because they wouldn't let her go. Mm. 
And at that point, I had been mentoring her, uh, and I just said to her, hey, well, whose life is this? What are you going to do? You got to make a determination what you're going to do. If this is what, how you feel. This is what you think you should be, um, what you should be experiencing at this point. You have to make a judgment call. And uh, she quit the job and went on my first trip with me and never yeah. looked back. Yeah, that's, hey, those are life changing events. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't get a chance to do them. Yeah. So if you never, get a chance never look back. Yeah. Got, she it. got mad talent. She's just <laughs> beginning to, to, to crest uh, oh, us the yeah. space of where she is. The girl is just, she's just gaining so much momentum. You wonder how much more momentum can she gain? You know, but to have her as a partner on this project has been great because we uh, are of like minds when it comes to specifically this portion of introducing the culture to our people. And um, um, it's, it's, it's all worthwhile, man. It's all worthwhile. Yeah, I learn well, something new every time I go there. I hear that. I look forward to uh, putting my name on the list the next time. We well, you know, everybody say that. Everybody say that. It's basically, that it's basically <laughs> making the time and making the pledge because the problem we have is that we're stone cold hustlers. <laughs> we're still making that money. And and sometimes that's at at at, at a cost of no rest and, and, and no health and no love life and anything else. So when you start talking about hey, let's go to Africa, it might not rank that high. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that uh most of the people that have gone with me had had experienced something powerful yeah I'm, I'm sure um you know it's 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 one of the few continents <clears throat> excuse me that i haven't really had a chance to go to i've you know i've traveled to europe and i've traveled to far east but i've never ever spent any time in africa whatsoever well, when i used to hear people make uh we reflect on the african trips i used to always go yeah 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 they're just ragging because they went and i haven't you know i had that attitude like yeah whatever yeah you know and then i went on my first trip 20 years ago with my son to ghana and uh, my mother had just passed and i can't tell you how that trip ranked Oh, I can imagine. Son was, was only, son was only 12. We got the bond. I went with a group of 60, 60 uh. people. And it was a mission trip. So I went with a church group. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's right. <laughs> so I got to learn how not to go to Africa on my first trip to Africa. <laughs> but, but I was still glad I went the way I went because I wouldn't have saw some of the reactions that 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 occurred during that tour had i not been with a mission trip who was there for a specific reason and function you know yeah i'm sure <laughs> all right away i was like man i wonder what it'd be like if i brought a bunch of artists with me you know will we lose our minds <laughs> right. And so now we're also trying to do you know i do my creative quarantine project every uh, uh january we're also trying to do a, a creative quarantine this January. You know, oh, okay. I'm trying to uh, solicit the help of Charlie Palmer and Kababi Bayok, who's a muralist out of St. Louis, to um, to do that first quarantine with us in January. So still pushing the pencil around to make that happen. But I'm looking at opportunities to do residencies where artists can just fellowship, man, it's at least one part of the year. I hear that. So it's always good. Nobody's got nothing going on in January. That's for sure. Well, that's that's why that month was originally picked because January and August were the top one and two worst months to um, be out yeah. there uh, shuffling your goods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember my hungry days when I would line up something in January, but that didn't last very long. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> so that's pretty much it man it's like um i'm encouraging other artists to do the same thing 
Um, we may go back to Senegal next year. We'll pick another country the, the, on the following year, though. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm gonna have to plan and go with you. And I know when you go there for your, you know, not just your tour, but when you go back there to your, to do your whole little thing where you just have real, real time. So I'm gonna have to check that. Check yeah, that but you know, time is a relative thing. So we normally hook up with other artists, but you know, when you when two artists hook up, man, it's a lot of powerful energy. So you never know what you're gonna do in an environment like that. So I love that. I love that. I love to see creative energy pass from one person to another person like that. I've, I've, I've really enjoyed working. With, I've, we've had upwards of 12 artists working together before. And so uh, my goal was to say, well, how many can we get in one room that would uh, enjoy that experience? And most artists do once they check their ego at the door. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. But um, it's got to be a good experience, no matter, no matter what. I mean, as long as you... It, if you, hey, well, you, our artists already have a powerful kinship. You know, we always have had a good rapport with one another, and so there's only one other thing more gratifying than having a good rapport with another, another a peer, and that's when you guys have something creatively in common. And so it's a real powerful opportunity to connect on another whole level, you know. And uh, and and we we've, we've done. Quite a few projects that way, and I, I love the way they turn out because I think all of us learn something about ourselves and the persons we were working with. Yeah, and I know you. Uh, I know you're you're excellent at doing that and bringing out the best in other people. So you continue to do that, my brother. That's all about you. That's who you are. So. I well, know. I'm I'm beginning to see, and it's it's while I'd like to accept that. I, I think that again, we underestimate the camaraderie of artists. Artists never really uh, leaned into that before because we were so busy being individuals. And we thought that was necessary for us to maintain our originality. And now we're realizing that all of that has nothing to do with originality. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fellowship and it's the learning, it's the fast track learning that that I I love and did not expect by doing that. You know. Yeah, it's when you allow yourself to be open to that. That's what's good exactly. About. Yeah, because none of your ideas were yours anyway. Yeah. All right, my brother. Well, I think we've had a, a excellent conversation about the uh, your artist artist to africa experience and i uh, appreciate you coming on the show uh look forward to seeing you and some more of your work real soon too and i know also we have uh we have the poncho retrospective in the house that's I right i am i'm going to be all over the place in november uh i got four book signings and i got two uh solo exhibitions opening in november so uh it's gonna be a very busy month so i'll see y'all out there on the road somewhere uh springfield massachusetts is first then atlanta then i gotta go to cheney uh, in pennsylvania uh national harbor and then i have two shows one at the children's hospital and i have one at the uh sabra forbes culture center in kensington maryland so they will be housing my poncho retrospective exhibition which will be launched uh, next month. So November's a busy month. And then Poncho 6.0 happens in December. So look out. <laughs> if you didn't get an invitation, that's because you wasn't on the list. <laughs> 6.0. Gotcha. That's right. Six All right. That's going to be your podcast. No, that's going to be a, a friend of mine has planned a uh, birthday party for me. Oh, you're 60th. At, at the Reginald Lewis, <laughs> at the Reginald Lewis Museum here in Baltimore. So, Oh, yeah, that's your 6-0. I got you now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to keep it kind of quiet, though, because folks trying to figure out how to get there. We have to announce it. It's going to be very private. You can't even plus one. Leave your husband home. All right. If you're, if you're, the name is on the list only. Hey, sound like it's going to be a great time. Well, you know, if I can get some of my people to stop working so hard, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you on the list, but you ain't going to show up. 
Hey man, if you put me on the list, I will be there. You on the list already, yeah, brother. You, list, will, you, will, be, you are on the be, list. I will be there, believe me. I will you be are there. on the list. Then I will be there. I'll tell you the details off air because I don't want Zeke to write it down. <laughs> hey, look, we also, <laughs> we also, I want you to take some time out while you're, uh, you know, I know you're a busy, busy guy, but you know, you said that you'd probably think about doing some work with me in terms of the mass. So I'm interested in doing that. So why oh, you, yeah. if you ever, yeah. uh, if you do some doodling or, you know, put together a couple of sketches. I'm looking know, forward to doing it. We keep and talking about I'll, it and we just haven't done it yet. So this is going to be the year that it happens. All right. So we'll make it happen. That's right. All right, my brother. You know, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. It's always a pleasure to see you and much love to you and love you. Well, you know, I love you like a brother, too, man. We appreciate each other, and I appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for bringing me on. Until next time, man. All right. See you soon. See you soon, brother. All right, everybody. That was uh, Brother Pancho. Uh, we had to pre-take that, as you can see. Uh, but um, if you have any comments, we, we can always see it again that's the good thing about our show it's going to be on youtube you can go back on facebook you can watch it from the beginning so you can always see something or re-see something that you didn't or want to really see again uh if it was I, I can see now that i need a microphone when i do an interview because i can't even hear myself so i'm gonna have to make sure that my microphone is like wired on me uh, in the future and I hope uh, you guys did have uh, uh, enjoyed the, the interview and enjoyed the show this afternoon I enjoyed seeing all some some of my favorite people uh, William back in the house uh, Rabia from New York City uh, Mona Lisa from Chicago T from Chicago uh, so uh, Zanetta was in the house, so it was really nice. Uh, Manhattan in New Orleans, Abu in Philly, it was really nice. And Pamela in, uh, uh, in Orlando, it was great to have all of you in the house with me today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Ellen will be back live with me, so we will have some hats, and we'll have another guest for you next week, okay? So I look forward to seeing you next week, and... So good night. Love you all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.